My name is Dr. James O'Donovan, and in this video, you're going to learn key things that you need to know about a medication called metronidazole, which is an antibiotic. Most commonly, metronidazole is used to treat skin infections, rosacea, and mouth infections, including infected gums and dental abscesses. It's also used to treat conditions like bacterial vaginosis and pelvic inflammatory disease. In addition to this, it can be used for infected insect bites, skin ulcers, bed sores and wounds, and to treat and prevent bacterial and parasitic infections. So all in all, it can be a really useful and powerful antibiotic if it's used in the correct situation. Now here in the UK, metronidazole is only available on prescription, meaning that you'll have to see your doctor to have it prescribed, and it comes as tablets, gels, vaginal gels, creams, and liquids that you can drink, or as a suppository, which is a medicine that you can push gently into your bottom. It's also given by injections, but this is usually only done in hospital. In this video, we're going to cover who can and can't take it, how and when to take it, possible side effects, interactions with other medications, as well as common questions or where to find out more information about it. So first, who can and can't take it? Well, most adults and children can take metronidazole. However, it may not be suitable for some people. To make sure the tablets, liquids, or suppositories are safe for you, tell your doctor if you've ever had an allergic reaction to metronidazole or any other medication. If you're pregnant or breastfeeding, you've got liver problems, you're having dialysis, or if you feel you won't be able to stop drinking alcohol whilst using metronidazole. The same applies if you're going to use the cream or gel on your skin, and if you're going to use the vaginal gel, it's also really important to mention to your health provider if you think you might have vaginal thrush, or if you're due to have your period whilst you're on treatment. So now let's cover how and when to take it. Well, in terms of how to practically take metronidazole, always follow your own doctor's instructions, and please always read the instructions on the information leaflet that comes with the medication before starting to take it. If you're unsure about anything, you struggle to read the information leaflet, or if it's not in your own language, don't hesitate to ask your doctor or pharmacist. Remember, they're there to help you and keep you safe. What we're going to cover now are general guidelines. Your specific situation might be different, so stick to what your healthcare provider advises. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, metronidazole is available in different forms. So things like tablets, liquids, and suppositories, as well as creams and gels and it's prescribed for various infections. The specific type, dose, and duration will depend on the infection's severity. For tablets and liquids, you should swallow the tablets with water after eating, but you can take the liquid without food. Now, if you have the liquid version of the medicine, you should also remember to use the provided syringe or spoon to make sure that the dose you're taking is going to be fully accurate. Suppositories, which are the medicines that you put gently into your bottom, used three times a day, are an option for those who have trouble swallowing. Now, in terms of when to take it, I would advise taking it regularly, spacing doses evenly throughout the day. It's really important that you take the fully prescribed course even if you feel better to fully clear the infection. So this means that even if you feel better after a few days, and the doctor has prescribed the course for seven days, you should take it for the full seven days. If you miss a dose, take it as soon as you remember, unless it's almost time for the next one. Don't double up doses and setting an alarm can help you remember to take it if you forget to take your medicines regularly. Now, using too much of this medicine is unlikely to be harmful, but speak to your doctor or pharmacist if you're worried. Now, for skin infections, metronidazole comes as a cream or a gel that's applied gently to the affected area. If you're using the cream or gel, try your best to avoid eye contact and wash your hands before and after applying it. Again, complete the prescribed course for effectiveness and don't stop the course early, even if things look to be getting better. It's really important with antibiotics that you complete the full course of treatment that you've been given. Finally, for bacterial vaginosis, the vaginal gel is used with an applicator. It's important not to have sex whilst using the gel and to avoid it during your period. Follow the same guidelines for missed doses as we've discussed before, and don't overuse it as with the other types. If you've got any concerns, please reach out to your pharmacist for help. So now we've covered practical issues about how to take the medication, let's cover potential side effects because just like any other medication, metronidazole might cause side effects for some people, but not everybody will experience these. Now, while side effects are rare whilst using metronidazole cream or gel, they're more common with the tablets, liquids, suppositories, or vaginal gels. 
it's important not to consume alcohol whilst taking these forms of metronidazole because it can cause severe reactions like nausea, vomiting, stomach pain, hot flushes, breathing difficulties, rapid heartbeat, as well as headaches. I would advise waiting for at least two days after completing your treatment before drinking alcohol, and that's to ensure the medicine has fully left your system. If you experience common side effects like feeling or being sick, diarrhea, or a metallic taste in your mouth or a furry tongue whilst taking metronidazole, continue the medicine but speak to your pharmacist. These side effects might be bothersome but can often be managed. However, if you notice more serious side effects such as yellowing of your eyes or skin, unexpected infections, mouth ulcers, unusual bruising or bleeding, extreme tiredness, severe stomach pains or changes in your vision, it's important you seek medical advice immediately and that's because these could indicate more serious health problems including liver or gallbladder problems as well as blood disorders or a problem with your pancreas. In urgent situations like experiencing a stiff neck, sensitivity to light, so looking at a bright light is almost impossible, hallucinations, confusion, difficulty speaking, or a really high temperature, it's important that you call emergency services or go to the nearest emergency department. And that's because these symptoms could be signs of a condition called meningitis or a severe brain reaction to metronidazole. A serious allergic reaction to metronidazole called anaphylaxis is rare, but it requires immediate medical attention because it can be life-threatening. This is the case you should call emergency services if you experience swelling in the lips, mouth, throat or tongue, breathing difficulties, a tightness in the throat, changes in skin colour, confusion or dizziness, or if someone faints and can't be woken up. A serious allergic reaction can also present as a swollen, raised, itchy, blistered or peeling rash. Remember, this is not a complete list of potential side effects, but just a flavour of what they could be. For more comprehensive information, it's really important that you always read the information leaflet inside your medicine pack. So now let's briefly take a look at some potential interactions with other medications. And this is just to let you know that some of the medication can interfere with how metronidazole works. This is not usually a problem when metronidazole is applied to the skin as a gel or a cream, but it can be more of a problem with tablets, suppositories, liquids or vaginal gel. It's for this reason that you should tell your doctor before you start taking or using metronidazole if you're taking any of the following medications. So firstly, warfarin, which is a medicine that helps to treat and prevent blood clots. Lithium, which is used to help with some types of mental health conditions. Disulfiram, which is used to help people with alcohol dependency. Phenytoin or phenobarbitone, which are used to treat epilepsy. Cyclosporin, used to reduce the activity of the immune system. Fluorouracil, used to treat some types of cancer. This is often a cream that you rub onto the face. Or any other medications that you take as a liquid in case they contain alcohol. It's also important to tell your doctor if you're taking any other medications, including herbal remedies, vitamins or supplements over the counter. Finally, let's finish off with some commonly asked questions about metronidazole. The first question that is often asked is, how long does metronidazole take to work? Well, for most infections, you should start to feel better within a few days. With serious swelling, including dental infections, the medicine will start working within a few days, but it might take longer before your symptoms start to get better. For some of the infections that metronidazole is used for, you may only notice an improvement after a week. Now, if you're using the cream or gel to treat rosacea, you may have to wait a few weeks before you start to see improvement. It's really important, as I mentioned before, that you keep taking metronidazole until you finish the full course. Do this even if you start to feel better because it will help to stop the infection from coming back. Other people will ask, can I drink alcohol whilst taking metronidazole? Well, personally, I would advise you that you don't drink alcohol whilst you're taking metronidazole, including the two days after you finish. That's because this gives the medicine time to leave your body, and this is important because metronidazole can react with alcohol to cause a number of side effects. So feeling and being sick, stomach pain, hot flushes, a pounding heartbeat, known as palpitations, as well as a really bad headache. For more information about metronidazole, including specific issues about pregnancy, breastfeeding and fertility, plus many more other issues or questions you might have, please check out the links I've included in the description box of this video. And as ever, if you're uncertain about anything, speak to your local pharmacist or the doctor who's prescribed you this medication. If you've got any questions, please reach out in the comments section. 
However, I have to stress this is an educational video only, not a clinical advice video. If you did learn something new, please consider subscribing to the channel for weekly medical education videos. Thanks for watching and until next time, bye.